there. The FIA European Track Racing Championship this weekend is in Belgium at Zolder. Between 1973 and 1984, this circuit hosted the Belgian Formula One Grand Prix. The last third of the ETRC season will kick off at this traditional racetrack 80 kilometers east of Brussels, the capital of Belgium. There was good weather, so a lot was going on in the paddock and on the racetrack. A look at the championship table shows Jochen Hahn, the champion from 2016, already 48 points ahead of Adam Lachko from the Czech Republic. 75 points back in third, Hungarian Norbert Kisch. The top three in the standings and every driver has his own ambitions for the weekend. Jochen Hahn, for example, wants to increase that lead as much as possible. I don't feel confident yet, that's the truth. We have to grab every possible point. That means we have to go all in, but also try to avoid accidents. For Adam Lachko, it's about securing his second spot for now. Jochen have a really good season this time, and he's really, really fast. He has a good car, and I'm not sure it's realistic, but I would like to try. And Norbert Kish is working with the team Tankful Fierance Fancy to achieve good results in the main races. We can see Johan is strong everywhere. Uh, Adam is not strong everywhere and I am not strong anywhere. <laughs> so we could just do, you know, a very, very consistent and, uh, and good podiums and scoring uh, a lot of points all the time. And that gives us the third position in the championship. New this year, a truck parade on Friday afternoon, seven kilometers from the circuit at Huisden Zolder. It's a big party for the fans. <laughs> and the driver's own weight has to be spot on as well. After almost two hours of freaks and horsepower, it was back to the track. Saturday at noon, lots of spectators are trackside. It's showtime. Fastest in Super Bowl, Antonio Albafetti in his red and white MAN truck from Team Truck Sport Lutz Bernau. He's half a second faster than Jochen Hahn. Albafetti is optimistic. Yes, I mean, to be in pole is a big responsibility, you know, you have to do it well. You have not to make any mistakes on the start, you know, so uh, you have to be very concentrated. Starting second, Jochen Hahn, who has always had at least one main race win per weekend, and he could win again. On the second row, Adam Lachko in the Bagheera Freightliner. He's third on the grid, eight tenths of a second slower than Alba Fetti in Super Pole. Fourth on the grid is Rene Reinert in the blue MAN number 77. 200 slower than Adam Lachko. On the third row, Andre Kurzim and Norbert Kish. The Hungarian sixth, over a second slower than Alba Fetti. It's time to go racing. As always, it's a rolling start. From 70 kilometers an hour, the tracks accelerate to 160. Albafetti is in front, behind him, Jochen Hahn under pressure. He didn't get the best start. Rene Reiner dives up the inside and he goes through. Adam Lachko grabs his chance and goes second into the first corner. Behind them, it's an intense fight. Kirsch and Kurzim, teammates last year, make contact. Kurzim loses some of the front bodywork. Shortly afterwards, Kiss leans on him. Kurzim runs out wide into the gravel. Kurzim can continue, but only in ninth. That incident was just in turn four before the long straight. I had a small touch with our Hungarian, Norbert Kish. It was a bit unfortunate for me and, in my opinion, not super fair, but I can't do anything about it right now. Fair. 
further in the front. Rene Reiner, fourth, getting all sideways through the chicane. He's also been under attack from Norbert Kish. Kish wants to pass. It's good that a truck weighs more than five tons and has bumpers made of steel. In the second or third lap, he drove into the back of me. I got a real hit from him. That probably slowed me down. I don't really know what happened at that point. And two laps later, there was the attack. I came a bit slow out of the chicane, so he had the chance to come alongside me. We had the same braking point and we had a bit of contact. Not an easy situation, to be honest. Not easy. And the situation for the track marshals, not easy either. They had to renew the so-called corner markers almost every lap. The duel between Adam Lachko and Jochen Hahn, the two champions of the two past seasons. They're second and third, despite all the rivalry. It's fair and without incident. That was a great manoeuvre down in the Gilles Villeneuve chicane. We were next to each other, we showed respect for each other, so both came out of the situation without any issues. The race was over, however, for Stefan Faust. The German from Team Tankful Ferenc Fanzig has turbocharger damage. At the front of the race, Albafetti in the MAN pulling away from Lachko and Hahn. And Rene Reinert in fifth place who would have had a blow from behind if Sasha Lentz had not taken the emergency exit in the yellow truck. The German can defend sixth ahead of Steffi Helm. Antonio Albafetti takes the win ahead of Adam Lachko and Jochen Hahn. It's the third victory of the season for the Spaniard and Team Truck Sport Lutz Bernal. Albafetti, a very happy man. You have to be concentrated, you have to be not make any mistake, but you are aware of everything, you know, you hear noises, you see things that uh, normally don't see, you know, and you think, oh, something is a problem. You, we have a problem or not? So, no, it was okay, it was okay, no problem. And congratulations. So, for the third time, the Spaniard takes the top step of the podium, joined by Lachko and Hahn. The result of race one, a win for Antonio Albafetti from Lachko, Hahn, Kish, Reinert and Lentz, with Andre Kurz in eighth and therefore pole position for race two. In twelfth, Eduardo Rodriguez, the youngest of the Rodriguez family. The 19-year-old from Porto is here representing his grandfather. A look back to one year ago, Andre Kurzin celebrating his first ETRC victories at Zolder with Tankpool Pirates Fansig this time. This season he is driving for the Don't Touch Racing team. That could also have been called Touch Racing. We have differential damage. I'm scared that the day will be over for us. Kurzim stays cool, just like the head of the team, Sven Walter, who has built up a great team around the young driver from Germany. Half of our team are ex-members of Tankpool Ferenc Fanzig. We've all met there, and so we had the idea to build up our own team. We're all more or less thrown together. That's why I was looking forward to the new challenge. I knew we'd have a competitive truck and that the guys around me have great experience. So it was a clear thing for me to start with the new team. All that remains is the question about the name of the team, Don't Touch Racing. It was five friends sitting together and then there was the name. 
The name is a bit special, and everyone notices it and thinks about it. That's what we wanted to achieve. That's what the name of us achieves. Yeah, when someone don't touch racing, please. Egal ob es jetzt im Positiven oder im Negativen ist, jeder schmunzelt darüber und macht sich so seine Gedanken wahrscheinlich. No spoilers, but the weekend in Zolder was a good one for Andre Kurzim, even though there was a DNF in the last race. Race two, Andre Kurzim on pole, just like last year, and he has the chance to win with this so-called reverse grid race. We know that there are a few strong guys coming from behind trying to pass me and fight for the win. I think we have the pace to win, that's what we showed in race one, but it won't be easy, that's for sure. Second on the grid, Steffi Hahn, the power girl in her orange and white Iveco truck. Row two is all German. Sascha Lentz lining up third. Next to him, Rene Reinert in fourth. The weather and the conditions at Zolder absolutely perfect as the 19 trucks roll out onto the track. The start of race two. On board with Steffi Hahn heading down to the first corner. On the inside is Andre Kurzin. Steffi Halm is on the outside, and Steffi goes right round the outside to grab the race lead. Rene Reinert is in the centre of the fight. Kurzin, Lentz, and Reinert all battling over third place. There's contact, but Reinert hangs on. Between us Iveco drivers, we always try to keep each other alive. I knew Steffi was a bit ahead of me already, and so I let her go. Trying to defend my position could have caused an accident. Da wusste ich, wenn ich jetzt reinhalte, kann das für mich ein Stück weit schlecht ausgehen. Deswegen zurückgezogen, als zweiter wieder eingereiht. Feeling the breath of Reinert and Hahn on that one already. Behind Norbert Kish is sixth, fighting with Adam Latko. Into the chicane. There's contact between Kish and Latchko. The Hungarian goes to the gravel, but stays sixth. Latchko seventh. The end of lap three, the top five. Steffi Harm leading, then it's Kurzim, Reinert, Hahn is fourth, and Alba Fetti runs fifth. It's the same on lap four. And again, there is a duel between Kish and Latchko. Adam Latchko clearly quicker out of the chicane up the hill. This time, Kish has the disadvantage. He has to let Latchko by. And Sasha Lentz comes up to challenge as well. Lentz round the outside, a great move. Hungarian Kish drops back to eighth. Up front, Steffi Harm leads the field. It's Andre Kurzim in second, as Hahn and Reinert squabble over third. Hahn moves through. Reiner now has to defend from Alba Fete. The two of them nose to tail as they pass the pits. The Grammar Truck Cup overall leader, Shane Britton, is 10th. He's the best placed Grammar Truck Cup driver in the race, ahead of fellow countryman Jamie Anderson. Steffi Harm leads in the Iveco. Behind her, fellow brand mates, Andre Kurzim and Jochen Hahn. Then, MAN drivers Reinert and Alba Fetti, fourth and fifth. At the end of lap nine, Steffi Hahn has a three-second advantage. Kurzim still defending from Hahn. Rene Reinert is fourth, but under huge pressure from Alba Fetti. Reinert is not feeling 100% fit. Feeling a little sick, he's struggling to keep Alba Fetti behind. And Alba Fetti can break later and goes through into fourth place. Two laps to go and Latchko is in the pits. A broken brake disc means the end of the race and no points for the championship. Jochen Hahn, Latchko's biggest rival for the championship, shows perfection lap after lap. 
on the penultimate lap. He makes a move against Kurzim to take second place. An important nine points for Hahn now on the way, it seems, to a fifth title. It's a bold move, but it works. Harm round the outside for second place. <laughs> Steffi Halm wins more than five seconds ahead of Harm. Kurzim takes third. It's a triple podium for Iveco. <laughs> There's a great battle, though, in the Grammar Cup. Anderson and Brereton, millimetres between them. The two Brits flash across the line. Anderson just ahead by nine thousandths of a second. While Steffi Halm and her team celebrate a second win of the season. There's delight at Team Schwaben Truck. There's also delight at Don't Touch Racing. Sven Walter, the team manager, is delighted too. Andre was behind me almost the whole race, but at some points I've seen Jochen and I just thought maybe this is perfect for me, especially for Rebecca. A 1, 2, 3 for the Iveco pilots on the podium. It's a long time since this has happened, if ever. On the first step for the official picture. Halm, Hahn and Kurzin, the top three in race two at Zolder. Behind them, Alba Fete, fourth ahead of Reiner with Sasha Lentz in sixth place. Adam Latchko ranked 17 for retirement into the pit lane, no points. It's been an all-action opening day at Zolder. And day two should deliver two exciting races as well. Action continuing on the Sunday. The paddock wakes up. After Super Pole, Jochen Hahn the fastest, and he will start on pole position for the fifth time this season. Two tenths quicker than Antonio Albafetti, the Spaniard who was a winner the day before. Pole position, you're hoping for a victory. Strategy goes towards victory, but now let's see how strong Antonio is at the start, but also Sasha and Adam. Let's see what we can bring home. Antonio Albafete with a win could take third in the championship. Lots of fans are trackside, ready for the action. The spotters in the pit lane shout go. The lights go to green, and Jochen Hahn leads down towards the first corner with Alba Fetti tucked in behind him. Sasha Lentz is alongside and Lentz challenges on the outside heading into turn two. Han though defends the advantage and pulls clear coming out of the corner. On lap three Han is leading but behind Alba Fetti attacks Sasha Lentz. Alba Fetti goes through but Lentz is up the curb and back onto the circuit just ahead of Adam Latchko, who now makes a move to try to get past the German. Latchko tries one side and then the other as they come past the pits. But now, though, Lentz fends him off. On lap six, Latchko makes his move. Lentz goes a little wide out of the chicane. And the Czech driver takes advantage of a tiny mistake and finally gets past the German. Norbert Kish gets into the back of Lenz. There's contact at the chicane. I wasn't prepared for that. If I was wearing glasses, I would have lost them. That's how hard the impact was. Norbert came to me after the race and apologised. He said his brakes were just too hot at that moment and he ran out of stopping power. Um, und meine Bremse war halt top gewesen, deswegen war ich in dem Moment zu langsam, wollte gerade einbiegen und dann kam der Schlag. Unbeatable in this race, Jochen Hahn. Last corner, the usual race winning drift for the man from Altensteig. Hahn celebrates his eighth victory of the season, followed home by Antonio Albafetti and Adam Latchko. There's joy at the pit lane from Hahn coach Reich Schumacher.
just like the two winners of the main races in Zolder, Han and Albafetti. Of course, I know Antonio. I'm fighting with him for so many years now. He really knows how to do it. You've got to be careful with him. There's applause for the top three, Jochen Hahn, Antonio Albafetti and Adam Lachko. All together on the first step, gentlemen, for the Goodyear Cap photo. The result of race three, Jochen Hahn on this winning streak, he takes another 20 points. In the end, just 1.7 seconds ahead of Antonio Albafetti with Lachko third from Lentz, Kurzim, Halm, Reinert and then Rodriguez eighth, pole for race four. Today, it's just all in. Race four, Jose Rodriguez, thanks to that reverse grid, is on pole. He benefited from a 30-second penalty against Norbert Kish in race three, and the Portuguese driver is nervous. Next to him on the front row, René Reinert in this second race of the day. He's always a candidate for victory, especially starting at the front. There are still plenty of fans here to the end of the day, ready for another good race. The start, on board with Adam Lachko. He's on row three behind Andre Kurzim. Sasha Lentz makes a good start at the inside. René Reinert and Andre Kurzim not as fast away as Lachko would like. And Rodriguez converts pole into the lead. On board with Norbert Kish, dust flies, but the Hungarian moves from 12th to 9th. The view from Kurzim's truck. A big bang as contact comes from Lentz. And suddenly, the Kurzim Iveco has no more drive. It pulls to one side out of the race. The electrics are dead. The truck is stationary. But two minutes later, the German can start the truck again. Rodriguez makes a small mistake, but maintains the advantage despite going off the road. On lap three, the battle is on for sixth, seventh and eighth. Kish driving defensively, leaning on Lachko, forcing him onto the grass. The Hungarian has been aggressive all weekend and he spent a lot of time talking to the stewards after the races or perhaps the sitting in his truck during the weekend. He gets a warning, another violation at Le Mans would mean disqualification. Andre Kurzim also has to deal with the race director. At the end of lap three, he was called into the pit lane. An electrical issue is never good and can easily lead to a fire. So we did a full check and we'll be back for Le Mans. The race was done for me anyway. Rodriguez still in the lead, chased by Reinert and Halm. Behind, Lentz, who has to pass the championship leader Jochen Hahn, but he drops back to fifth. Both gain one place because Reinert has to deal with a suspension problem and retires from the race after four laps. For Reinert, it's a big disappointment. The top six just before the end of the race. Norbert Kish is fifth. A good fight from him, but it's not going well for him on a whole this season. It's been a frustrating year for the Hungarian. After 12 laps, Josie Rodriguez is a winner by just four tenths of a second from Steffi Halm and Jochen Hahn. The first to congratulate the winner, Jose Rodriguez's mum, who can hardly find the words. I'm very happy. It's my second victory. And uh, thank you, my team. Thank you, Steffi. And uh, another guy. It's hard. The, the race is very hard, but I win. I, I am very happy. The Portuguese driver celebrates his first win of the season, the second of his career. The last was Austria last season. Jose Rodriguez on the top step of the podium at Zolder. The result of race four confirms the win for Jose Rodriguez from Steffi Halm and Jochen Hahn. Sasha Lentz fourth ahead of Norbert Kish. Antonio Albafetti sixth ahead of Adam Lachko. And then Stefan Fass. Fass the best of the Grammar Truck Cup drivers in this race. The Freightliner pilot Ollie James, the most successful Grammar Cup driver of the weekend. Oliver James. 51 points the total for the weekend, the best weekend of his young career.
congratulations. For sure, we have uh, finished with uh, three uh, podium positions, two of them being uh, uh, third position, uh, se sorry, second position, and uh, one being a win. For sure, it's uh, it's good for for me, and uh, let's look forward to Le Mans. Heading to Le Mans, the championship leader, Jochen Hahn, has a chance to secure the championship already and grab his fifth title. He's heading into the next race weekend, 66 points clear of Adam Latico. Le Mans always gives plenty of dramatic racing in the European Truck Racing Championship. We'll see you there.